Welcome in to Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. People say I am the best boss. They go, God, we've never worked in a place like this before. You're hilarious. Use weather, sports, and of course, all the local info you need to start today. I think that pretty much sums it up. Yeah! Catch Talk of the Town live on 103.7 WTIB. What? Cable 7 in Greenville and worldwide at WTIBFM.com. What? Now here's the host for Talk of the Town. Yes. Henry Hinton. Hey, hey, welcome in to Talk of the Town. It is hour two of uh, the program here this morning, five minutes after eight o'clock. Good to have you, McGee and Hinton in the uh, studio this morning. No WITN person today. Uh... They've, they've just kind of given up on us on Monday, haven't they? What's up with that? We gotta, I gotta scream about that to the ITN people. Yeah, just scream about it. Yeah, scream loud. Because you're, you're having to double duty. That's okay. You're okay with it. That. I'm okay with that. I was late getting back in the studio because nobody made coffee. Michael, what's up with that? Nobody's making the coffee. I had to make the coffee. It's because Clark's not here. Where is he? I have no idea. But Clark C. K. Willis, whose birthday was yesterday, typically makes the coffee in the morning. Yes, he does. He doesn't make it well, but he does make it. That is true. Uh, let's see. A lot of follow-up from last hour. We talked about Big Boy. <laughs> Am I pronouncing that right? Hey, there you go. You got it. Big Boy. Big Boy. B-O-I. Being one of the performers at halftime. And who's the other guy? Travis Scott. Travis Scott. They'll perform with... Uh, uh, Maroon 5, Adam Levine and Maroon 5. I, I actually am a Maroon 5 fan. Me too. Of the bands that have come out in the last uh, 10 or 15 years, I think I think Maroon 5, some of the Maroon 5 music is really mm-hmm. good. Some of it stinks. But most of their music, and Adam Levine's such a talented singer, I, you know, I've liked them. But, I, you know, they're going to, but they had, but again, the NFL had to get some rappers in there. And if you missed that discussion last hour, there's a report this morning that they're going to be uh, the only way they got these uh, rappers to perform was to uh, agree to give money to a bunch of social justice charities, including Black Lives Matter. I think that's going to be a huge deal with NFL fans. But, you know, maybe, maybe I'm misreading this. Maybe the whole deal is they need the rappers because you know the, the, the that's a huge part of the NFL fan base as well. I don't know. The NFL's calling it the broadest range of musical genres ever seen on the stage. I don't know about that, but we'll see. All right. So I've never watched Big Brother before. Have you? I've never watched mm, it. Yeah, I've seen bits and pieces. Before. The first season that it came out, I remember watching like uh, fifteen minutes of it and thinking. I'll never get that 15 minutes of my life back mm-hmm. because it's just, uh, you know, now, now what it used to be when they first started uh, big brother, they used to have like, they would have cameras all over the house and you'd have to guess who's sleeping with who. And it was a bunch of young, good looking people. And so, you know, that was the hook. All right. Who's going to hook up with who? Right. Mm-hmm. That was kind of the big brother deal. And then there was conflict and you'd always have, you know, there'd be the, the cocky one and the good-looking one and the crazy one and, you know, that whole thing. So, they, But in recent years, they've had to go to the celebrity Big Brother thing. And, and yesterday, if you were watching any of the NFL playoff games, CBS had, uh, had promised that they would announce during the NFL games yesterday who the celebrities were going to be on Celebrity Big Brother, and they did. And I was thinking to myself, what a bunch of losers <laughs> – who had, you know, former, these are all, I mean, if you go down this list, they're all like former celebrities that, you know, you know, they can't get anything else. So they're having to agree to, to be on Celebrity Big Brother. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, how low does your career have to be for you to agree to go be on Celebrity Big Brother? Is anybody with me on this? I mean, Joey Lawrence is going to be on. Oof. <laughs> Oof. Whoa. I mean, he hasn't yeah. done anything since that show. What, what, what was the show he was on? Blossom? Wasn't he on Blossom? I think so. Yeah. Can you imagine the conversation between Joey Lawrence and his his talent agent? The agent calls and Joey Lawrence says, "Yeah, what do you got for me? What do you got? You got anything for me yet? 
And the agent goes, um, well, I got Celebrity Big Brother. They want you. And he goes, I'm not doing Celebrity Big Brother. I'm above that. <laughs> and um, like a year later, the uh, agent calls him back and goes, hey, they still want you with Celebrity Big Brother. And he goes, okay, what are they going to pay me? <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> so Joey Lawrence is doing Celebrity Big Brother. Jeez. Kato Kalen is doing celebrity. Big no, he's not. <laughs> did, Kato, what has he been doing? You know, Kato, isn't this like his third celebrity? Oh my goodness! Reality show. <sighs> <laughs> Kato Kalen, who who became famous for nothing except he was freeloading off of off of. Uh, O.J. Simpson. Have you ever wondered, by the way, why O.J. Simpson allowed him to live in his pool house? Has that ever hit your brain? You ever thought about, you know, why does why is Cato Kalen, this surfer dude, this blonde surfer dude, that can't make complete sentences? Why is he? Why why did O.J. Simpson choose him to live in his pool house? Hmm. Never thought about it. You know, he he what I've never heard that he was doing duties around the house or anything. He wasn't cleaning the pool. <sighs> kind of makes you go, hmm. So Cato Kalen and Joey Lawrence are going to be on. Uh, Ricky Williams. Remember the Ricky Williams who left the NFL because they wouldn't let him smoke weed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember that? I do. How'd that yep. turn out for you, Rick? <laughs> yep. Did they ever bring him back? He got brought back for a short while, did he? I can't I remember. I think a short stint. I, s I saw him at the Heisman Trophy presentation back in December. Yeah. He was there. So all these NFL players that want to smoke weed, you know, they they hide it and they try to mask it and all Not this Ricky. stuff. But Ricky, Ricky just said, he nah, you know, it. I think it's wrong that the NFL don't let me smoke weed, man. He embraced it. Here's another one. Ryan Lochte. Will be on Celebrity Big Brother. <laughs> wow, <laughs> another guy who has you know tried to make a living off of reality TV since he had his 15 minutes of fame in the Olympics. You know, Lochte is just this really good-looking, studly guy until he opens his mouth, and then you're like, "What? <laughs> That's him?" Uh, let's see who. Uh, oh. Tom Green will be on Celebrity Big Brother. Man, they have really <laughs> reached out Tom for these. Tom Green, who was funny for about, a, you know, five seconds, and then his career went to hell. He did Road Trip, I think. He did Road Trip where he ate the mouse. Yeah. Remember he ate the live mouse? Yeah, he had the snake. Oh, jeez. Yeah. He was also Weird in guy. a movie, apparently, according to this, uh, called Freddy Got Fingered. Yeah, never saw it. Uh where has he been since the 90s? Tom Green, but he's going to be on Celebrity. Can you imagine that conversation? That, you know. So <laughs> I'd love to see what some of these guys look like. Tom now. Green's agent called and he says, hey, you get me an HBO special? Am I going to be on Netflix? I mean, uh, you get me a Netflix deal? Uh, no, but Celebrity Big Brother wants you. <laughs> wow. But here's my favorite. Anthony Scaramucci will be on Celebrity. <laughs> Scaramucci, the mooch. The mooch. The mooch. You can't make that up. It's Anthony Scaramucci. You know, I got to be honest with you. I'm going to watch it. I, you know, I got to watch this. Anthony Scaramucci, you know, here's the question. Will he last longer in the Big Brother house than he did in the Trump administration? <laughs> That's what a good poll question. Well, he was he was White House communications director for what ten days, nine days. Yeah. He may actually last longer. Here's the crazy thing. <laughs> I'm reading this thing this morning. It says uh, most of these people really don't need introduction though because they've already done Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> <laughs> they are in there in the portion of their careers where they don't turn down any paycheck. That's <laughs> oh my lord! You know the 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 rumor had been that Caitlyn Jenner and Sean Spicer, former White House uh, press secretary, and Caitlyn Jenner, the uh, 
the former, the formerly known as Bruce Jenner. <laughs> I'll try to I'll try to pick my words carefully so I won't be a target of the of that community. I don't want to be a target. So, but uh, apparently they could not come to an agreement with Sean Spicer and Caitlyn Jenner. So instead, they went with. Uh, uh, Joey Lawrence and Tom Green and Anthony Scaramucci. The Mooch. That's going to be a train wreck, isn't it, to watch that show? I mean, it's just to say those three names together is a train wreck in itself. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Um, here's the latest on the, uh, on the big scandal in the uh, U.S. Congressional District 9 where um, Mark Harris, the Baptist preacher out of Charlotte, uh, says he's won the election. He told he, exclusive interview with uh, Carolina Journal this morning. Headline is uh, Harris expects st state certification. Says he has GOP backing in Congress. Story on uh, CarolinaJournal.com this morning from Dan Way says Republican Representative Elect Mark Harris says he expects a state court will certify him the winner of the disputed 9th U.S. Congressional District election. He will go to Washington despite what he considers political interference by a Democratic-controlled state elections board to scuttle his victory. In an exclusive interview Friday with Carolina Journal, Harris said he received positive feedback from North Carolina's Republican congressional delegation during a teleconference with House Min Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy and uh, the National Republican Congressional Committee. Some congressional Democrats have said they will not seat Harris. They vowed to go to court if necessary to block him. Harris said some elections board Democrats may have intentionally delayed his certification to give their party a chance to win the seat. Wake County Superior Court officials said Friday no hearing date has been set on Harris's petition to have the court declare him the winner over Democrat Don McCready, or Dan McCready, who trails in that election with the unofficial count of 905 votes. Monday, today, is the deadline for all sides to file their legal arguments with the court. So where is this going to go? It's going to be very interesting to see. Mm -hmm. But here's, here's the really interesting thing about this story to me. Um article that came out Friday in or Saturday in the News and Observer, uh, NC elections violations alleged in 2016 were aired with Justice Department officials. It is now uh, a fact that all of this fraud that has now been discovered in Bladen County was also discovered in 2016. Again, I go back to Pat McCrory. Pat McCrory said that there was widespread corruption in Bladen and some other counties, I believe he thought uh, Columbus County, and that his folks had uncovered all this corruption. And, you know, I, I, remember, uh, I remember people like William Barber and some others going, oh, that's just the governor. He's, you know, he got beaten. It's, it's hard feelings. It's sour grapes. Okay, we now know that, uh, this, that, that, that this went all the way to the Department of Justice in Washington, D.C. Not this year during the election of the congressional candidates and Mark Harris, but in 2016. The head of the Justice Department's public integrity section met with staff from the North Carolina State Board of Elections about improper election activities alleged in Bladen County that occurred in 2016, according to emails obtained recently by the News and Observer. The acting chief of the public integrity section was scheduled to meet with Josh Lawson, the state's board's, uh, state board's general counsel, and uh, Kim Strack. The board's executive director on January 31st, 2018, the meeting was set up in Raleigh by Brian Meyer, who's an attorney with the U.S. Attorney's Office. The meeting took place, and there's been no email correspondence between the board and this public integrity section since a follow-up email a day after the meeting. Also, nothing else has happened since that meeting, including charges by the Wake County DA's office which, of course, was run by a bunch of Democrats. And so, you know, the uh, look, we just have heard forever that there's no voter fraud in North Carolina. 
And and we heard it again in 2016. All this stuff that happened in Durham County on the night of the election in 2016. And people say, you know, again, McCrory talking about that as sour grapes. I don't think it is. Because look what happened. It's some of the same people that were hired by the Mark Harris campaign. Now that they're working for Republicans, everybody's going nuts about it. The 2016 allegations are still being investigated by Wake County District Attorney Lauren Friedman, allegedly. In 2017, the state board referred its investigation to the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Eastern District of North Carolina. So uh, here's what the uh, executive director of the state board wrote to uh, the then U.S. attorney. Our findings to date suggest that individuals and groups of individuals engaged in efforts to manipulate election results through the absentee ballot process. Are you serious? 2016. So they knew in 2016 that this guy was doing this. But they did nothing about it. Now, explain that to me. Is it because the Republicans lost? Whereas this time the Republican won, so everybody wants to throw the election out, not certify it, the whole deal. Uh, Am I seeing black helicopters here? I don't think so. Uh, 21 minutes after 8 o'clock. I don't know. If you've got an opinion on that, we'll take it. 252-561-8255. 561-8255 if you want to get in. Uh, 22 minutes after 8 o'clock. we got news headlines coming back. 252-561-8255. What do you think about this fact that it's now been discovered that there was election fraud in 2016 and they did nothing about it and now they're going nuts about it? I'm just saying. Give me a call. We'll be right back. They got a chance to win this with a field goal. Give me time. Give me time. Wait, there's a timeout. They're going to ice the kicker. What is going on? I don't know. I've never seen anything like this in my life. The snap is good. Threads are up. towers where most others don't. So people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here. Or catch the game live way over here. Isn't that what you pay for? A stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Visit Real Wireless, your local U.S. Cellular authorized agent in Ohoski, Williamson, and Windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere. When you're not feeling well, Vident Health can connect you to the care you need anytime, anywhere, from any device. Connect to a new way to get well. Connect to Vident Now. With Vident Now Virtual Care, you can visit a board-certified doctor online 24-7. It's private, secure, and affordable. See a doctor now at VidentNow.com. 
Question, what will you find on all over-the-counter or OTC medicine packages to help you choose the right drug and use it safely? The answer, the drug facts label. This label lists the medicine's active ingredients and purpose, how much to take, and warnings you should know before using it. Remember, even OTC medicines you buy without a prescription can cause side effects you don't want. So follow the information listed on the drug facts label. For more information, visit FDA.gov slash drug facts label. A message from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Talk of the town. Good morning. It is 25 minutes uh, after 8 o'clock. Nice to have you here this morning. Uh, we're going to have morning clouds giving way to sunshine around lunchtime today, so don't despair. Don't get depressed. It's not another rainy day in Monday, as Karen Carpenter would say. Always get you down. There's going to be sunshine <laughs> today on Monday, but it's going to take a few more hours, and then the sun will break through all these uh, these these clouds that we've got pretty thick this morning. 25 after Let's check news headlines right now, and then I'll give you the full forecast. Here's McGee. All right, thanks. And one woman is dead, and the man is hospitalized with gunshot wounds following a late-night shooting in the Gracie Farms Mobile Home Park near Newburn. Major David McFadden with the Craven County Sheriff's Office says that the shooter was still on the loose as of 4 a.m. this morning. The department got a call for shots fired around 10.50 Sunday night while the investigation for that call was just underway. A second shots fired call came in to the department. Neither victim has been identified, but McFadden said it was not a random shooting. One other person was there at the time the two victims were shot. In other news, even though Eastern Carolina saw mostly rain on Sunday, Governor Roy Cooper issued a state of emergency to help turn back the, or turn the power back on for the western and central parts of the state that were hit with snow, ice, and freezing rain. The state of emergency allows utility workers to restore power quicker because it limits restrictions to truck weight, size, and hours of service. The snow and ice has caused nearly 100,000 outages from Henderson to Surrey County. Some areas of North Carolina received a half inch of ice accumulation, according to the National Weather Service. A Kinston man charged with murdering his father will make his first court appearance this morning. The Durham County Sheriff's Office charged 33-year-old Chivalry Moore with murder. The charge comes after an hours-long standoff with the Durham County Sheriff's deputies. Deputies say they were conducting a welfare check at a residence on Tomahawk Trail in Durham last Tuesday when they found Moore barricaded inside the home. Investigators found the body of Moore's father, Willie Moore, inside the home. Deputies believe he died at some point before the standoff. A portion of Frog Level Road near U.S. 13 in Greenville will close this morning as crews with the NCDOT prepare to widen the two roads. Cones and signs have already been put up to let drivers know about the project that will last most of this week. That section of Frog Level Road is expected to reopen on Friday. An investigation underway after a fight broke out between inmates at the Onslow County Jail this weekend. The Jacksonville Daily News reports that at least eight inmates got into a fight just after midnight on Saturday. The jail was quickly placed on lockdown. Sources say no officers were injured, but a few inmates did receive minor cuts and bruises. There's no word on what prompted the fight, and charges may be possible after an investigation is complete. And finally, Wayne County is boasting some of the lowest gas prices in the country as the cost to fill up continues to plummet nationwide. Currently, the average price of gas in the U.S. is about $2.30 per gallon, but there are two stations in Wayne County, one in Fremont and one in Pikeville, selling at $1.49. According to GasBuddy.com, those prices are some of the lowest in the country. The average gas price for all of North Carolina is $2.09 a gallon. GasBuddy.com says or ranks Oklahoma as the state with the lowest average gas prices at $1.80 a gallon. Hit. So what's the average for the state? Yeah, two oh nine. I paid two eighteen on uh, Saturday. I paid two eighteen this morning. Yeah. So the uh, the gas prices continue to be a uh, a question mark for some. Um, and um, I, I, I how are they selling it for a dollar forty seven a, a gallon in? Um, <laughs> I don't know in Goldsboro. It's got to be some supply and demand involved in that. I don't know. We should ask. Uh, we should ask Smitty at Country Mart, who, by the way, sponsored this newscast. Let's check our weather first, though. You got the weather. You want me to? Do yeah, it? I can pull the weather up for you. Here's the um, here's the weather right now. Brought to you by Country Mart stores of Pitt County. What yeah, the morning clouds today will turn to afternoon sunshine with highs in the low 40s. For tonight, we'll see clear and cold temps with lows near freezing. And for your Tuesday, mostly sunny skies with highs in the upper 40s. Overnight lows tomorrow night will be right around 31 degrees and plenty of sunshine back in the forecast for your Wednesday as a warming trend begins. 
with a high of 53 degrees and lows in the mid-30s. All right, news and weather service of Country Mart stores. There's two locations in Greenville, 903 and Stokes. Actually, two locations in Pitt County, not in Greenville, but the uh, uh, Greenville location uh, just outside Greenville between Greenville and Bethel Highway 11. And, of course, that's where you'll find Smitty's. Great uh, cafe if you uh, want breakfast or lunch. Great country cooking every day, and uh, they got daily specials. And I'm not talking about cheeseburgers. You can get a cheeseburger at Smitty's, but if you want a full country cooked meal, you know, today would be a good Smitty's day, wouldn't it? Just thinking about that. It would be. Uh, yeah. We're talking about uh, with, uh, with the meat and veg and um, – and and your rolls and the whole deal. I mean, it's it is really good country cooking at uh, at Smitty's restaurant uh, on Highway 11, just outside Greenville, between Greenville and Bethel, at Country Mart stores. And of course, uh, they also have food. Uh, they have the grill at the Stokes location as well. Uh, country Mart stores, the home of golf products. And when you're doing business with the folks at Country Mart, you're doing you're doing it with home folks. I talked to Smitty this weekend. Kenneth Smith just had uh, surgery on both knees. Wow. Had a uh, knee replacement on both. And he's doing great. Said he was walking around in like a week. Asked him if he was shagging yet. He said, not quite yet. <laughs> Country Mart Stores is uh, our sponsor this morning. Thanks to Kenneth Smith and the folks at Smitty's Restaurant and Country Mart. We were talking this morning about NASCAR and the fact that uh, the announcement was made over the weekend that NASCAR laid off about 5% of their company's workforce. Looks like there was about 50 people. Uh, they did not say where the layoffs occurred. About 300 NASCAR employees work in downtown Charlotte. NASCAR is bidding to acquire uh, International Speedway Corporation, which also owns and manages racing venues. Both organizations are controlled by the France family. We were, we were talking about this earlier this morning. And why is NASCAR waning? Why is the popularity of NASCAR waning? And we took, we had like uh, eight, eight calls on that, and everybody had a different opinion. But apparently NASCAR is losing touch with its base. And I got an email here from one of our loyal listeners, David. He says, one word, points. Used to be that every driver needed to win every race to get paid. They drove like it. That race was the only thing that mattered. Second place was unacceptable. Now season championships have taken the place of single victories. If you can preserve your car, place fifth, get enough points to help you get toward a championship and live to fight another day, you do it at the expense of a victory by driving the wheels off the car. Go back to big checks, being handed out at the end of the day. Forget seasons. That race, that day pays big, and you better drive that way. Petty wasn't driving for points. Bobby Allison didn't care about points. They were competitors. The only thing I like more than me winning is you losing. <laughs> he says he's been to a few races, and points make it boring. Uh, speaking of, uh, yeah, I just got a text from uh, from a buddy who says, don't forget, Smitty is a huge race fan, and uh, Kenneth Smith will be in Daytona. He goes every year to Daytona. Now, I, I keep getting invited to go with this crowd to Daytona. I've never been to a NASCAR race, but I'm not sure I'm man enough to go with that crowd. I would love to see you go with that group. No, I, that crowd right there. I'm not I don't sure know if I'm, you can hang with that group, man. I'm, I could not hang with that group, I promise <laughs> you. I would wimp out. I'll be back at the hotel Watching Andy Griffith reruns <laughs> on, uh, on on MeTV or oh, something. Yeah. Yeah. It's 27, <laughs> 27 in front of nine. We'll be right back. They got a chance to win this with a field goal. Give me time. Give me time. Wait, there's a timeout. They're going to ice the kicker. What is going on? I don't know. I've never seen anything like this in my life. The snap is good. The threads are up. the kicker 
What is going on? I don't know. I've never seen anything like this in my life. The snap is good. Threads are up. cellular put towers where most others don't so people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here or catch the game live way over here isn't that what you pay for a stronger signal in the middle of anywhere visit real wireless your local u.s cellular authorized agent in ohoski williamson and windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere when you're not feeling well, Vident Health can connect you to the care you need anytime, anywhere, from any device. Connect to a new way to get well. Connect to Vident Now. With Vident Now Virtual Care, you can visit a board-certified doctor online 24-7. It's private, secure, and affordable. See a doctor now at VidentNow.com. Question, what will you find on all over-the-counter or OTC medicine packages to help you choose the right drug and use it safely? The answer, the drug facts label. This label lists the medicine's active ingredients and purpose, how much to take, and warnings you should know before using it. Remember, even OTC medicines you buy without a prescription can cause side effects you don't want. So follow the information listed on the drug facts label. For more information, visit FDA.gov slash drug facts label. A message from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Eight thirty-six. Uh, McGee's got sports coming up, and uh, we'll find out about what happened in the NFL. Yes, of course. Uh, as always, the uh, Patriots won, and um, that was no surprise. They they get they get good just about the right time every year, don't they? <laughs> yeah, they do. They do. I don't know what else to say about it. I, I thought the Chargers might win that game. But in the playoffs, they're always tough to beat. But no, the Patriots were dominant. Uh, they're going to play the Chiefs in the AFC Championship game, and I'm pulling for the Chiefs because I like the Mahomes kid. I do too. And I don't like Tom Brady. And he even acknowledged that yesterday. After the game, he was like, you know, people, everybody wants us to lose. And here's Tom Brady after the game yesterday. Maybe a good game. They're a good team, and uh, we played them earlier this year. You know, I know, you know, everyone thinks we suck and, you know, can't win any games, so we'll see. It'll be fun. Was he just being ingratiating? Uh, I think he was just, you know, you know, he doesn't typically respond to the critics. I think, that, I th I think he was because I think he's heard so much that people think he's, uh, you know, he's done and needs to retire, and the Patriots aren't that good, and – they show they still are, and he's still that good. Man, he looked good yesterday. He did. But you know what else looked good was the New England defense. Mm-hmm. You know, and I but I just don't want them to win another Super Bowl. Do you? I don't think they will. I think the Chiefs I can beat them. I don't know if they play like they did yesterday, man. Who's going to beat them? I don't know if the Chiefs can beat them. I think the Saints can beat them. I don't know. I do. I think if they play like they played yesterday, it's going to be hard for anybody to beat them. Yeah. We'll see. That's what I think. Uh, news from yesterday's uh, Sunday morning talk shows. Um, Newsweek magazine this morning is reporting that famed Ber uh, journalist Carl Bernstein, remember him? He was one of the two guys that broke the Watergate story. He and Bob Woodward, Carl Bernstein. You don't hear much about Bernstein anymore. Mm -hmm. Woodward writes all the books. He wrote the new uh, Trump book. Uh, so Bernstein was apparently on CNN yesterday on their uh, program called Reliable Sources. And he's, he's saying, you know, everybody's waiting for the Robert Mueller report to come out on Trump. Well, Bernstein uh, uh, said yesterday that he's been told that a draft of the report uh, makes an attempt to show that Donald Trump helped Russia destabilize the United States. Now, this is kind of what we thought, you know, the kind of dribble we thought might come from this. But uh, Bernstein, who's renowned for his uh, coverage of Watergate, led to the resignation of President Nixon, appeared on CNN's Reliable Sources to discuss the two bombshell reports released this weekend, one from the New York Times, 
one from the Washington Post, which reveal new details about whether or not Trump and his aides have colluded with Russia. You might know that uh, I think on, was it Friday or Sunday, the New York Times had a piece that said Donald Trump worked for the Russians. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the New York Post reported that Trump has gone to, quote, extraordinary lengths to conceal direct conversations that he had with Putin. The New York Times article revealed that an FBI opened that the FBI opened a counterintelligence investigation into Trump after he fired James Comey in 2017, the uh, FBI director, suspecting the president could be working on behalf of Russia. Trump has anger, angrily denied allegations that he worked with Russia and has attacked regularly attacked the meeting for reporting on the investigation, but Bernstein slammed Trump's dismissal of the probe. Yeah, I, you know, I, I just got to say this. I don't know the truth, but I ain't listening to the New York Times for it. I mean, it's kind of like the News Observer these days. I mean, if you want the truth, you got to go somewhere other than the News Observer for what's really happening in North Carolina, or you'll just get a bunch of spin. And, you know, I think it's doubly true for the New York Times. Yeah. Speaking of the New York Times, their op-ed yesterday, their main uh, opinion piece, was entitled Run, Joe, Run. It's about Joe Biden. They want Joe Biden to run. It says in the summer of 16, it was becoming clear that Hillary Clinton was a weaker presidential candidate than many Democrats had expected. Some problems were of her own making, and some were overhyped by the media, including emails. <laughs> But the bottom line was that she did not look like the ideal candidate for the political moment. She was an establishment insider in a populist time. By summer, it was too late for Democrats to do anything about it. The candidate's best position to beat Clinton, or at least sharpen her, had passed on the race. People like Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden. Bernie Sanders ran a strong outsider campaign, but when a socialist from Vermont wins 43% of the primary vote, it tells you something about the front runner. <laughs> the lesson here is that trying to identify the perfect nominee far in advance is a fool's game. At the start of a presidential campaign, it's hard to know who will shine and who will struggle. It's also hard to know what national mood will be the following year, the election year, which brings me to the much debated po potential candidacy of Joe Biden this time around. I have a piece of advice for the former vice president. Run, Joe, run. Again, this is from the uh, op-ed yesterday in the New York Times. Run because you have strengths that no other Democrat candidate does, including your depth of experience and connection to the Obama presidency. Run because your populist image fits the Democrats' most successful political strategy of the past generation. Run because you will never have another chance. And run because you're not afraid of losing. Now, here's my feeling about that. Other people could disagree. Of all the Democrats that are out there that could run, that I think would have a really good chance of beating Donald Trump, I'd say Joe Biden is at the top of the list. I think he's a front runner. And here's why. Even though he's older, I've always said this, he's likable. You know, I mean, if he's a huge left-wing liberal, he hides it well. He probably has no chance of winning the primary unless he gets way out to the left. But, I mean, if you take a look at what's happening right now with people like this uh, Ocasio-Cortez, who is basically a, uh, a teenager who decided to run on Twitter and won by accident because and she's a socialist. I mean, if you take a look at where the party is, right, where the Democrat Party is right now, they desperate, the country desperately needs a guy like Joe, uh, Joe Biden to run. Because you otherwise you could end up with a socialist president for God's sakes. The uh, of the candidates I've seen on the Democratic side, he's the only one though that on inauguration day, with the exception of Elizabeth Warren, who I don't think would be that much of a threat, but I don't know, that would be in his seventies. Everyone else is so much how, younger. How old is Biden? He'd be seventy-eight. On inauguration Isn't that day. about the same age Reagan was when he went in? Was Reagan about seventy-eight? Google McGee, how old was Reagan? Reagan became president at what age? Meanwhile, speaking of uh, 
Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the socialist from um, New York who is now in Congress. Reagan was 73. Oh, wow. So he'd be the oldest ever by a long shot. Eh, that's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem for Biden. 78. Let me think about that. He'd be 80. He'd be 83 at the end of his. No, 84. It's two because the election's two years away. He's 78 now. So he'd be 80 no, when he's he'd, be, he'd be 78 on inauguration day. So if he was. Oh, so he'd be 78 so if he won. Right. Yep. So he's 76 right now. Mm-hmm. So he'd be 80 at the end of his first term. I, you know, maybe. I don't know. I think I it's going to be a problem. I think it's going to be a problem. Well, I, I should say Bernie Sanders would be, he'd be 79. I forgot about Bernie. Excuse me. How can I forget Bernie? Bust a Bernie. <laughs> How can I forget Bernie? I mean, I just, can we? Can the country afford to listen to that again for two years of campaigning? Uh, here's somebody who doesn't think, who thinks that, the the Democrat Party has left him and gone way left, and that's uh, former U.S. Senator Joe Lieberman from Connecticut, who yesterday appeared in the New York Post, kind of doubling down on his suggestion that uh, people like uh, Ocasio Cortez are not the future of the Democrat Party. Um, Lieberman was on uh, Fox News Channel's. Sunday morning futures with Mario Bartramono. He said uh, she just takes us back to the big spending, big taxing Democrat Party, and the Democrat Party is not going to succeed succeed that way. Previously, Joe Lieberman had said that Cortez was too different and controversial, and pointed out the majority of the party is center left. Here's the problem with that, Joe. You're hoping that the party is center left. You're hoping that, but there's no evidence of it. The evidence is, is that the party is now way left and it's leaving people like you and Joe Biden. So that's why I say the country needs Biden to run. I'm not sure the Democrat party does, but if not, you're going to have some whack jobs running for president in 2020. I mean, I know the Republicans have got their whack job already in there, but you know, the reality of it is, I mean, that's, they may try to respond with somebody as far left as I'm not going to say Trump is far right because he's not. Trump is not far right, but just far crazy. <laughs> so as we get ready for 2020, that's the latest. Mm. It looks like uh, mm. the New York Times wants Biden to run, which I think is very interesting because. You know, Biden, they're saying Biden should run because he's more uh, more of a centrist. Well, the New York Times not centrist, so I don't get that. But whatever. All right, twelve minutes in front of eight. Uh, let's get a break, and McGee will have sports coming up next, and then we'll replay our laugh track, which is uh, Leanne Morgan this morning. If you missed it, it's hilarious. We'll be right back. Merry Christmas and happy holidays from all of us here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Lease the new 2018 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo for just $289 a month. The Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo four-wheel drive for just $299 a month. And lease Motor Trend's SUV of the year, the Jeep Wrangler, for only $302 a month at the Big Finish Sales Event. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come see us, come see us. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Carolina's greatest hits play all day on 1079 WNCT. Don't stop In the morning, Carolina's greatest hits play here. WNCT. They got a chance to win this with a field goal. Give me time. Give me time. Wait, there's a timeout. They're gonna ice the kicker. What is going on? I don't know. I've never seen anything like this in my life. The snap is good. Threads are up. How I define making 
in the broadest possible terms, it is making something extant in the world that didn't exist. Everybody who's ever made anything is bringing something into fruition for a reason. And that act in and of itself makes us stewards of our culture. It's something that we're talking about. It's a response. Actually, it's telling a story. That's really what it is. And I include everything that could be made, painting, sculpture, welding, all of that. Yellow is positive. When a kid gets their hands on the world and learns that they can make their fantasy play, that they can make their reality, that's power. And as far as I'm concerned, everyone should feel that kind of power. There we go. If there's something that interests you to bring into the world, that's fantastic. Go figure out how to do it. Go tell your own story. There it is. And so I want to know why you make. Let's go. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. Merry Christmas and happy holidays from all of us here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Lease the new 2018 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo for just $289 a month. The Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo four-wheel drive for just $299 a month. And lease Motor Trend's SUV of the year, the Jeep Wrangler, for only $302 a month at the Big Finish Sales Event. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come see us, come see us. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Talk of the town at uh, nine minutes in front of eight o'clock and sports time brought to you by the Tire Realty Group of Greenville. Hey, Tire Realty Group's got your Valentine's Day plans covered already. They're giving away three Valentine's Day dinner reservations at Nino's Cucino Italiano here in Greenville. Nino's, one of my favorite spots, over $400 worth of prizes that uh, TRG's giving away. Nino's is going to be providing each of the three winners with a bottle of red wine and a cheesecake special dessert. Man, is that good. Look, that's worth winning the prize right just getting that dessert that Massimo makes over there. Uh, Jefferson's is going to be giving each of the three winners a flower arrangement. Uh, Tire Realty Group will be providing each of the three winners with a $50 gift card to Nino's. There's three chances to win. you got to go to Tire Realty Group on Facebook and Instagram for announcements on how to enter each of the three different contests. Winners are going to be drawn uh, 114, which is today, by the way, so you got better hurry and get in. But there are two more winners after today, also on the 28th and on the 11th of February. Go to Tire Realty Group on Facebook and Instagram, and they will tell you how to register to win in this Valentine's Day dinner uh, giveaway from Nino's Cucino Italiana. It's, where they, it's actually from Tire Realty Group, but that's where you're going to be having dinner. And trust me, if you've never been to Nino's, it's a worth it. Ask a Massimo. It's a good. A Massimo. It's spaghetti time. <laughs> All right, it is a... That's an old laugh track. Speaking of that, we got Leanne Morgan in, in, uh, coming up. But first, here's McGee on sports. All right, despite a historic performance from freshman Jaden Gardner, EC remained winless on the road, falling to UCF 76-65 to on Sunday. Gardner went for a career-high 35 points and grabbed 20 rebounds. It was the third time this season that Gardner has posted 30-plus no points. In a game, ECU falls to 8-8 eight and eight, overall, 1-3, and three, and the American Pirates return home on Wednesday to face Temple. That game is set for 7 o'clock. In the NFL, Sony Michelle ran for 129 yards, had three touchdowns, and the Patriots beat the Chargers 41-28. In the divisional playoff Sunday to earn their eighth straight trip to the AFC Championship game, New England will play at Kansas City in next week's AFC Championship game. The Saints rallied to beat the Eagles 20-14. The New Orleans got two touchdown passes from Drew Brees and two interceptions that were key for Marcus Lattimore, including the last one that went through the hands of Alshon Jeffrey from the Eagles. That pretty much sealed the deal for the Saints. They move on to host the Rams in the NFC Championship game. Yeah. All right, 7.54, six minutes in front of uh, 8 o'clock. Uh, this is an interesting story right here. Now, it's running on CNN.com, so, you know, consider the source. But um, it appears that potentially, and again, the, the, the source is CNN, so you have to consider that. But it, it appears that... Uh, there was another public relations blow to Donald Trump's attempt to get the wall built last week from none other than some of the top drug smugglers in the world who were testifying in the El Chapo trial. These are cartel members. 
they testified about how drugs are smuggled into the United States. So they allegedly went on, you know, on, on the witness stand in the El Chapo trial and said, you know, you want to know how drugs are smuggled into the United States? Fishing boats, trains, tractor trailers, and ordinary car vehicles. Some cartel members have testified about using underground tunnels, but none have said that they've ever transported drugs into the United States at unwalled sections of the border. Now, of course, uh, this comes at a time when Trump is still trying to get the, uh, get the wall built. And uh, here you have the top drug smugglers in the world testifying <laughs> in court that it ain't going to help. So that's not going, you know, and of course, now whether the timing on that was, was such that, you know, the, the Democrats can use that to mm -hmm. say, look, look, see, I mean, look, even the drug smugglers say they're not, they're not bringing in over the border. And I suspect that's, there's probably partial truth on both sides. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Um, you know, the next time that you, uh, that you have to go through all the crazy TSA things, and I, I, I told you that I had real problems when I was in Miami uh, trying, to get on a, trying to get on a plane when I was leaving the Keys at, uh, after our vacation Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, you know, I, you need to think about this story right here. A guy got through the TSA, through the security team at, uh, at, at Atlanta Hartsfield International and flew to Tokyo on January 3rd, according to the TSA, with a loaded gun. I thought that would never happen again. Ever. A release from the Transportation Security Administration, TSA. It says, TSA has determined standard procedures were not followed, and a passenger did, in fact, pass through a standard screening TSA checkpoint with a firearm at Hartsford, Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport on the morning of January 3rd. Delta Airlines also issuing a statement to CNN. Upon the customer's disclosure, the airline reported the incident to the TSA. So it, they found out because the customer told them. Isn't that crazy? Now, the question, now, a lot of people are saying, well, it's because the government was shut down. But TSA is not shut down. Yeah, no, that's not why. They just... So, <laughs> But, you know, hey, that cannot happen. That cannot happen. And just hearing that story frightens me to death, doesn't it, you? I mean, you know, but knowing what we happened here on 9-11, mm. I'm with you, McGee. I, and I'll tell you, the way the screening procedures are now, how did he get away with it? Yeah. Oof. I don't know how he got away with it. I'm telling you, man, if I've got uh, a speck of dust on me when I'm going through airport security, they find it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you've got anything in your pocket, I mean, you have to take the belt off now, the, the whole deal. I mean, I, I had some issues because my uh, driver's license, my picture of my driver's license wasn't very legible. I mean, man, they, look, they almost undressed me in Miami a couple of, about a month ago. It's crazy. All right, let's redo the laugh track. Leanne Morgan, one of our favorite comedians this morning. Here's a replay of our Talk of the Town laugh track. But I don't know. I mean, I don't mean to be gross, but I, we have got a dachshund and a beagle in the bed. And the, the dachshund, my husband wanted them to sleep in the bed because he loves to cuddle on everybody and wants all of us to cuddle up to him, and we, none of us want to. And so, but it's nothing against him. I'm just hot, Lord. And then... Then the dachshund sleeps right up, right around here, and then the bingles like right here. So I'm sleeping contorted every night, and then my husband, you know, is holding my breath while I'm trying to. <laughs> and it worries that dachshund so bad. <laughs> If he's trying to do things to me, she gets right up at my face and she's looking at me like, what's he doing to you now? <laughs> I'm gonna put a stop to this. I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna vomit the bed or I'm gonna... <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you got a lovely Ann Morgan. 
won't be long and we'll be able to uh, play her famous uh, Valentine's Talk of the Town laugh track cut, which is, is one of the all-time greats. All right, enjoy your Monday. Things are going to clear up today. We are uh, going to have highs in the low 40s and uh, lows tonight uh, down near freezing. So have a great day.